Welcome to Cause We Care, a weekly 30-minute conversation concerning the concerns and activities of the people who care and live in the Valley. Welcome to another Sunday morning of Cause We Care. I'm Danny Davis with conversation from people who take time to simply make things better for all of us by simply getting involved. We're talking today to uh, Dr. Donise Warden and a member of the uh, Arizona Naturopathic Medical Association. Uh, is that easy to say, AZNMA? That's perfect. <laughs> it's fantastic. You pronounced everything correctly, including my name. I'm impressed. Oh, wow. Well. I read well. I read well, doctor. I, I appreciate you joining us. This is going to be a lot of fun. We have uh, a couple of things that are uh, sort of surprising to me. When you deal with sunshine, you deal with summertime blues. No season gets better other than, uh, you know, when you're dealing with the summertime. The living is easy. School's out for it. Yeah. Everybody's uh, kind of in a three-point stance to be a part of the party here. And then all of a sudden, we find out about sad. What is sad? <laughs> Right. So, you know, we don't want to take the damp off the people that are enjoying this summer, but there is a certain amount of people that SAD stands for Seasonal Affective Disorder. Now, most people think, isn't that the stuff that happens to people that live in these other places outside of Arizona, where in the winter they get sad and they need to have light therapy to not have the depression happen? Yeah. What happens for us as well? Too much light, too much sunshine starts affecting our internal clock of night and day, and our rhythms get off, and we can actually have this major depressive disorder with a seasonal pattern in the summer. So, uh, and you discovered this recently, or is this something that you've been dealing with for years? Well, we've seen it, we know it, and it was interesting because there's more and more studies that have come out with it. A lot of yeah. the studies came out because of the winter depression, but nobody wanted to think that it was happening in the, in the sunshine states, and, and then it was. Those of us that work in behavioral health, um, you know, we were seeing it, and it wasn't, you know, there's a difference between sad and depressed. But people who have a depression or a propensity for this, it was like there was a pattern. We knew every summer they were going to be going through something and they needed more support. So now the research is telling us why. And we can get into as deep as you want of the why we think that's happening. Okay, now we've been dealing here for the last couple of years with this drought going on. And we've been uh, yeah. nothing but sunshine, hardly any rain at all, any precipitation. And it's gotten to the point now, you know, I'm getting real tired of it, tell you the truth. <laughs> and you see, all your plants dying out. out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's getting crazy. Yeah. Well, there's two things that help that make this sad, these sad symptoms come on. It's not just that we've got longer days, we've got too much sunshine and not enough darkness, but the heat itself. We know that heat is related to road rage, it's related to more uh, violent uh, acts. All the bad stuff from angry and irritation happens around the heat. That also affects those hormones, our night and day, which is called circadian rhythms. So we, the body says, I don't know when day is, when night is, because it's light all the time, or at least for a long period of time. It's not getting enough darkness. So should we change our habits, for example, take a cold shower before we go to bed, or <laughs> would <laughs> well, that help? No, you, you, well, what helps is, is let's have a little bit more darkness, that even during the day. You know, we want to get out about 15 minutes during the day to get sunshine. Take your sunglasses off. Let that light hit the eyes. Don't look at the sun. But let the light hit the eyes. It tells the brain, hey, it's daytime. Time for energy. Time to run from the bear. Let's go. But it's also supposed to be seeing some darkness, especially in the afternoon and at night. So the body says, hmm, it's getting time. It must be time to make melatonin, the sleep hormone, and our brain gets to signal through the eyes of darkness. So during the day, a few times, go into a little more dark, cold areas, but at night when we sleep, that room should be dark. We need to invest in some blackout curtains. Um, so that that light's not there. And when you get up to go to the restroom in the middle of the night, if that's happening for you, have a night light that's very subtle and low just in that room. Because if you turn on that light, that light goes to the brain and says, okay, it's daytime. Even if you can go back to sleep, you're not getting back to a deep restorative sleep because your brain was told it's, it's, it's time to get up and it's daylight. 
So we have no control over anything. It all comes down to our brain <laughs> handling this whole thing. <laughs> well, it comes down to our actions. We, you know, yeah. I mean, you'd like to blame it all on the brain, but we do. These hormones get signals from that brain. But, you know, going to sleep at the same time and getting up at the same time is crucial when we're talking about these kinds of disorders. It's all about rhythm. I find it kind of ironic because uh, my wife and I have decided here in the last couple of days, we get direct sunlight coming through our front door. Because they've yep. taken they've taken a lot of the trees across the street away, so we've run into a problem with that, and it's it's been a problem for about five years now. We've decided yep. to take action, and we're doing a shade that's going to drop down from about uh, ten feet up, you know, and come down in our our foyer, so you, you it'll it'll close off all the sunlight. So that makes sense to me now. And the rhythm, you know, if you tell the body weekends are different than the day. You know, and, and you wake up and you go to sleep at different times or you go on vacation and everything gets messed up. Um, it's all about giving the body the signals that it needs in that time. So, yes, you want to have areas of the house that are a little bit darker even during the day. But we love sunshine for a lot of reasons. We also know that some of the causes can be low vitamin D that can affect uh -huh. The, the pro promotion of serotonin activity. And everybody says, we live in Arizona. We don't have vitamin D deficiency. Yes, we do. For years, I've been testing that even became, before it became popular to test. And my, you know, my, my, my guys that are out there, golfers or tennis pros, they were all dividing vitamin D deficient. We've got to remember it's a hormone, mostly a hormone. There's something blocking it. Most people are vitamin D deficient, even if you're out in that sunshine. So vitamin D has to do with serotonin, a happy, I'm okay hormone. It keeps us out of, uh, of, uh, depression. Yeah. That's what the, those antidepressant meds are about. They just try to help you hold on to the serotonin your body's making. They don't give us serotonin. They just help us hold on to it. Uh, but they've got a lot of side effects. So there's, there's other things, you know, that we need to look at is what's happening with the melatonin, the serotonin. How do we get our body to understand that, um, you know, it needs to be in a pattern? And sunlight is the key to this seasonal pattern, both in winter and summer. So those cases that are coming in the summer months, it's from too much sun. And when we have too much sun, it affects that melatonin production. Does this affect the women differently than men? I, I think that's part of it. As you know, yeah. women get this effect, uh, they have more propensity for this. Three women will get it to every one man. Interesting. But what's interesting is, and it may be hormonal driven, it probably is, we have more um, hormone fluctuations than men do. But here's the thing. Women get it more often, but men get it more severely. So the symptoms that come with this, men have a harder time with it than women do. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. And more rage, more irritability. You know, the, the symptoms really are the same as depression, except they're a little bit different when we start looking at how do they look differently. If you have symptoms, if you have the winter depression, you sleep more. And yeah. you're more depressed. Exactly. Sleep more. In the summer seasonal, like we're doing, people are more, they have an underlying depression, but they're more irritated, they're more, you know, angry, and you sleep less. And age has to do with it. It's mostly diagnosed in people from like 18 to 30 years old. It can be before and after that, but it's less likely to occur as you get older. 18. And if you have a relative with mood disorders, or you do, you've got a bigger chance. So if you've got a relative, uh, for example, with, with MAD, whatever, does that, is, yep. is, that, is that any kind of a genetic thing that's going on there or what? We think there may be, it's not clear yet, that there may be a genetic component. But yeah. I'm always so quick to pull out that genetics is very little on what <laughs> expresses. It's more about the epigenetics. What are the things that you're doing that, you did, that your same family did the same way, and that can be affecting this. Same habits, So I'm yeah. not about, oh, it's genetic, can't do anything. Yes, we can. You know, just living closer to the equator, there's more evidence of this. In Arizona, we're about, I don't know, 2,300 miles from the equator. It seems like a long way, but it's really not. We're closer to the sun. We have a longer time period of it, and those longer opportunities, you know, I mean, days, more opportunity for things to heat up. Boy, do we get a long uh, period of sunshine here, I'm telling you. Yes, I've never, I've never seen anything like this. Yes. i got a question here uh, about bipolar. Yes. Now, if I'm bipolar, yes. all right, is, is that going to be yes. a part of the effect, too? The P 
people who have bi- bipolar disorder may experience more sensitivity to these seasonal patterns. Wow. And that's been there. We know that mood changes, uh, schizophrenia, uh, psychosis, anybody with major um, mania or, or depression, any mood disorder, and especially bipolar has been studied, a lot more susceptible for these seasonal changes. And we see it in summer and in winter. Oh. They, they have a little bit more struggle during that time period. Okay, we're talking to uh, Dr. Donise Warden, a member of the Arizona Naturopathic Medical Association, and uh, this is very interesting stuff about SAD. What, you, what, what is SAD exactly? It's seasonal affective disorder, right? Right, that's right. And there's winter and summer in Arizona. We are more likely to have the, the summer form, for and, sure. And, and nobody really, I don't think people are really aware of this. This Is not. Is this a common occurrence? Is this something that is, is made public on a regular basis, or are we the first two to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really common. I will no. say, um, you know, it's estimated about 10 million Americans have seasonal affective disorder, but only a certain percentage, about 10% of those get it in the reverse, which is the summer one that we're talking about. But about 20% more than the 10 million may have mild SAD. So in other words, you feel a little blue and you're like, what's wrong with me? I don't want to go out and do anything. I feel depressed. All the symptoms that come with this. Sure. And you may need to say, all right, there, there's something here and what are the things that I can do about it? You know, I found this interesting. Um, off, they did a study off our Twitter feeds in Arizona to see which were the angriest, saddest cities and which were the happiest. <laughs> Uh, Tucson was the saddest and angriest. They had more tweets with the hashtag sad and angry. <laughs> and Gilbert was the happiest city in the state. Interesting. <laughs> more happy. Yeah. And Sunday <laughs> is the happiest day of the week. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Sunday, as far as the tweets are concerned. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking something about church has something to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe. Well, yeah. Listen, we take Sundays a day of rest, whether it's medication, not the meditation, meditation, prayer, time with family. It's that day off where we just get to say, let's figure out what's important in our lives and slow down, slow down a bit. So I think that's a big piece of it. I'm with you. Do you yeah. think Do you think that, mo- that possibly making a move toward uh, getting therapy, is it, would that help? Is that something that we should consider? Well, if there's a, ma- you know, from moderate to major, if you're really... Some of the symptoms are you have trouble sleeping. You're avoiding people and activities that you used to enjoy. If you're really depressed, if you're really, there's no interest in pleasurable things, including sex and physical contact. If you have weight changes, your appetite is off. You've got that sleeping pattern. You have difficulty concentrating. That's when you say, listen, I need to try some of these things first. If they don't work, get help. Now, that could be help from family and friends because a lot of this is because we're sequestered. We're tucked in. We can't get out. Now, add the pandemic on top of that. We're just not out there connecting with others, so things are going to be worse. So, yes, treatment, um, part of that can be psychotherapy. It can be medications, but let me just say this. If it's mild to moderate depression, exercise has proven in the studies to be just as effective as the medication. I always say, let's try these things first. So what type of exercise for this particular issue? It's rhythmic, continuous rhythmic. That means every day for 30 to 60 minutes or most days. But it's things like walking, swimming, dancing, things that you, where you're moving your arms and legs in a rhythm. That helps the body get into these natural rhythms that we're talking about. Night, day, producing our own endorphins, those feel-good brain chemicals, serotonin. We're producing this, and we're working on that. So I like the idea of let's use exercise, let's try some vitamin D if it's low, melatonin, boost your B vitamins, um, eat right. So what does that mean? Things that are affected, we know that make this worse are sugary foods and simple carbs. That's the pasta, white bread. It makes this worse. So what makes uh, it better? Uh, salmon. It's a rich source of tryptophan. That love salmon. Yes, sir. That makes serotonin good. Yes. Salmon, nuts and seeds, turkey and fish, poultry, right? Uh, eggs, pineapple, and Walnuts and flax seeds can help improve your mood, and if you're already on an antidepressant, it may boost the effectiveness of the medication. Love it. Isn't that nice? That's great that news. Food be your medicine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, when you're, when you're talking about, uh, for example, if, if you go to therapy, uh, 
Do they yeah. take do they take Medicare? <laughs> I, uh, well, yes, a lot. Some of them do. <laughs> some of them do take Medicare. And well, I always say with a therapist, if yeah. you go three times and you don't feel a connection, you need a new therapist. Yeah, move uh, over. But yeah. I will also say prayer, meditation, these things, and music. There is nothing that shifts mood faster than music. If you're feeling blue, put on your favorite song, and even if you don't feel like it, try to dance. It immediately shifts your chemicals in your body and gives you a a lift. These are things that don't cost anything. And reach out to family and friends, even if you don't feel like it. Volunteer your time. Help others. You know, join um, support groups or something that you've always wanted to do. Go do something spontaneous. Learn how to paint. Challenge yourself. It's hard when you're depressed. But the things that help it the most are the most challenging to want to do. I feel that it. means reaching out, connecting to others. I feel I should right? probably uh, pay you some kind of a fee here because you've already... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what you've done, uh, and this is the truth. I work I work out quite a bit, and then coming into the summer and the hot days of summer, uh, dealing with that, I usually I like to run you know, my three blocks and then walk a block, run three mm-hmm. blocks, walk, and do about an hour's workout. And it's gotten to the point to where this sunshine is not, it's not safe at all. So walking is right. probably the key. Yes, yes. And remember about the body, it's always about balance. Too much of anything or too little of anything is not good. Too little sleep, too little not having your bowel movements do, you know, yeah. uh, uh, perform regularly. Too little, but too much exercise, too much sunshine, too much darkness. Any of that, it's always about balance. And you've got to say, what can I do to get out in nature, get my rhythms back? We can test the hormones, and we can help you flip your night and day if they've gone backwards. You can work with a doctor that knows how to do these things. But why not first try sunshine, moonlight? In fact, moonlight, um, Yale did a study this year. Um, They weren't looking for this, but they found it through their artificial intelligence. They said, good grief, there is something to this Transylvania effect. That's that full moon thing. Why is it that weird, strange things happen around the moon that we've known for centuries? And and so, yeah, still not quite sure what that we what's making it happen. But what we do know is that we takes us longer to go to sleep. We don't sleep as long, and we don't get as much deep sleep. The quality is off during full moons. What that teaches us is our bodies are connected to the earth to the cosmos, the sunlight, the moonlight, all of that. So I'm the big proponent of nature therapy, forest therapy. Get out there, and it's about balance. And like you hit the nail on the head, look and say, hey, I'm pushing too hard trying to run through this and this heat. Do do a dance. Sit in, Get inside in the cool air and dance to your favorite songs and and how that rhythm help you. You're going to be a major hero in our life, I'll tell you that. Uh, Dr. Donise <laughs> Warden, a uh, member of the Arizona Naturopathic Medical Association, I really appreciate you taking the time with Cause We Care. We learned a ton from you today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I'm ready anytime you want to talk about any topic. This is fun. I enjoyed the work that you do, and I think it's important for people.